Our next conversation focuses on the healthcare sector in Nigeria as the country grapples with the challenges of providing quality medical care to all of its citizens. Some issues stand out, but we will focus on the issues of affordability and the rising cost of medicines, or let's say medications these days. Uh, let me bring in my guest, Dr. Usman Bashir, a uh, consultant, public health physician, Bayaru, Bayaru University there in Kano. He joins us all the way from Kano via Zoom. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on Inside, Doc. Thank you for having me. Uh, Doc, if you don't mind, uh, you're, I, I think you were chopping off your head. If you don't mind reclining back in your seat. So very good. Okay. So we can see your handsome face there. That's it. That's fantastic. Great. Uh, thank you yes. for joining us, Doc. Uh, let's begin by yes. examining the intricacies of universal health care and how it ties to the issue of cost control, you know, in healthcare delivery in Nigeria. Otherwise, you know, what should ordinarily be a fundamental human right becomes a privilege accessible only by those who can afford these services. And we're talking about services, whether they are at the primary health level in local communities or they're at the top, you know, at the tertiary level. Why is cost control an integral component of universal health care coverage, and why should it remain so? Uh, thank you for having me. I think uh, we need to understand uh, what is even universal health coverage so that we can understand the context and then why is price coming in there. Um, oh, sorry, why the cost is coming, cost of services, cost of uh, uh, care. Uh, I think universal health coverage by definition means uh, that all people can benefit from quality health services when and where they need them without suffering from financial hardship. And this, uh, the only, the, it has three dimensions, which is access to health services. That means everyone who needs those services should get them, not only those who can pay for them. It means somebody, there should be some cushioning effect. And financial risk protection means people should not fall into debt payment for just uh, accessing care. And then quality of services, the quality of service should be adequate and effective, meaning that um, people should, like you mentioned, at every level of care, you know, we have primary, secondary, and uh, tertiary. And uh, it, even though, like I said, there's need, the first thing is uh, even healthcare financing. And this can come in so many forms, government, partners, and uh, community level. And now we have what we call uh, health insurance scheme in the country, which also reduces, as you know, um, most of our exp health care expenditure is about 70% of it is out of pocket expenditure. And usually to avoid all these catastrophic health uh, events, we need to have somebody who will pay. But you know, uh, the, 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 the healthcare financing is just coming on board at the national and subnational level. And mostly it's in the formal sector. So there's need for engagement of the non-formal sector. That will help in, in increasing coverage and also carrying people people from from the health sector, and then even re rebumping the, the the healthcare financing institution because when we have so many when you have a lot of enrollees, it means there will be a lot of funds that will go around, and then the services covered will increase. Like you know, uh, some of the services now are not being covered under the national insurance scheme because of of uh, the numbers of the, the capital base of the uh, uh, insurance system. But if we have more people coming into the, uh, running into the, especially in the non-formal sector, engaging like several states, like in Kano also, we're already engaging the non-formal sector. They are already been engaged. And I think Kano is one, the Kano Healthcare, the Kashma, the Contributor Healthcare Scheme, I think is one of the high, the one with one of the highest enrollees in the country. So meaning that people are now getting aware and are understanding the need for them to have this uh, health insurance or contributory scheme into it so that that those uh, those catastrophic health event as you know uh health event they occur they, they don't not they don't give you notice they can occur at any time you can have a cardiac arrest you can have a stroke and then you might need a lot of funds which might not be available at that time and then a lot of problems are coming and then you might even have what you call chronic illnesses that will that, that, will, that, that might cause problem so i think there's need for uh for this need for more government funding, more budgetary okay. allocation to health, and then even True. the provision of services to where people need them. Meaning that we need to uh, we need to under, we need to uh, revitalize our primary healthcare uh, services. Meaning that 
people can now, because most of the services are being accessed at the secondary level. So there's need for us to have uh, people understanding that most of the, when we revitalize and make our primary health care functional, people can access services where they need them and where they live. Oh, I, and I totally agree with you, especially when you reference, I mean, you've referenced a couple of issues here, Jermaine, I noted them down, you alluded or referenced the issue of structure, you know, the very structure of our, uh, uh, you know, um, coverage, universal coverage plan here in Nigeria. And then when you talk about, you know, these services getting to the grassroots, I, I figured or reckon you mean underserved communities. And so I still want to talk about this whole issue of accessibility and affordability as critical components of universal okay. healthcare. When we talk about these imperatives, you know, for making healthcare accessible to all Nigerians, regardless of socioeconomic status, I mean, I would like to ask you, ideally, what should be the role of community-based health insurance schemes, you know, and even the subnationals, particularly at that level, you know, when we talk about, you know, getting to the underserved areas. And of course, uh, not forgetting the private sector as well, because when you say partners, I reckon that's also what you're probably talking about, uh, Doc. Yes, the private and even people funding healthcare, you know, partners come in and have, they have a program which helps in, uh, in, in, they have a track, maybe they have a service they want to help improve or they want to sustain some services so they can come in and provide those services but we need to have a sustainability framework, meaning that uh, even if when they when they when they leave, we have uh, somewhere we can fall into. So and then, like you said about the access, the access to care, you um you know the service the structure might be there, meaning that the facility might be available, but the required manpower might not be there. So accessibility can come in in so many front front, in human resources for health, resources, equipment and even the complement of services, and even the referral network. Because, you know, some services are the primary health care, but there's need for them to be referred. And then, and you know, health system does not work in isolation. It's a system. So it needs, there has to be good road, there has to be power supply, there has to be good access road, there has to be even security for people to even move. So uh, really, health system is not, is not it, for all this to, for health care to be at par, these services must be uh, work, work, working. And then even the economy of the nation, looking at the economy we're in now, how people are working, uh, trying to survive. So they need to now prioritize what they need to do. And then, like you said, the community uh, health financing system come into being, especially in this time where we have a cash crunch. So if somebody is uh, already enrolled, he can access those services at this time without suffering catastrophic health uh, expenditure. So financing definitely has to be strengthened, especially at the community level. I mean, yes. and this is yes. quite jamming. You know, uh, Dr. Bashi, uh, another development that worsens access to healthcare delivery is the rising cost of drugs. Uh, at the moment, and you have talked about how hard the times are, you know, and how difficult things are for people. I even now, there is, uh, for us nationally, there is limited local production or manufacturing, I should say, of drugs. They, we are highly import dependent uh, when it comes to medications here in the country. I wonder what you think about the 5 plus 5 regulatory scheme of NAVDAC and you know the other policy they've all also instituted, the one they called ceiling 34. Uh, do you think these measures are enough or are doing enough to boost local manufacturing of drugs here in Nigeria? No, I think we need to do more because we need to really improve the local content. But like I said, it's not about the local manufacturing because somebody cannot come into manufacture when there's no power supply, there's no good water supply, and then the, even the prerequisite manpower. Because most of you know, with this brain drain we're suffering now in healthcare, a lot of our experts are somewhere in most of those multinational companies are, are manned by Nigerians. So I think we need to now have what we call brain gain, meaning that these people should come, the government should create an enabling environment for these investors to come in and invest in the country and develop the system. And then so that we have our local local drugs that we can, that are cheap, affordable, and accessible. Because now with rising dollar exchange rate, there's no way you can have, uh, uh, what do you call it, cheap drugs. 
That's the reality. The only way you can have cheap drugs if you have joined the health financing. Even the health financing, somebody is paying. So you can see that the per capita expenditure will be higher, especially with, with countries like us that we are import dependent. So, so uh, import dependent. So we are importing most of our drugs and then we, 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 are, we are having a cash crunch. So it's unlikely that we're going to have this uh, rising cost of drugs at the near, uh, at the, at the nearest uh, end or less. Uh, and if we fast track the process of having local consumers and then even wooing the investors to come in and invest in our so, health I mean, in our um, drug, drug manufacturing uh, system. Yes, and that's a fact, really. I mean, some of the issues you've raised there are quite factual. Uh, but then, I even with the dollar crunch and some of these policies that NAVDAQ have put in place, we're seeing some, you know, form of, you know, manufacturing still take place, uh, you know. But yes. I wonder, you know, at this point, what, you know, are some of the other innovative solutions you can prefer uh, towards, you know, moderating this skyrocketing cost of medications in Nigeria? I mean, there are prescription drugs, like take the drugs for diabetics, for, for instance, and the prices are now, you know, it, it, it may be unavailable to certain people who fall under certain social economic structures of the society. What can we, what innovative ways or measures or systems or structures can be put in place now to ensure that, look, a persons, you know, at the bottom there who may not have the kind of, you know, cash required to assess diabetics drugs, for instance, can actually get them. Otherwise, you know, some unscrupulous persons may just start making substandard falsified medicines and these vulnerable, desperate Nigerians may fall prey. Yes, and I think, um, like I said initially, we need to really strengthen our healthcare financing institutions, meaning that the national and the subnational health, so that all this, uh, the burden of these uh, medications will now fall on those institutions because when we now have a large pool, and then also uh, our regulatory bodies like NAVDAQ, they need to really up their game so that all these people coming with fake substandard drugs don't have a place in the country, just like the way NDLA is doing. So I think there's need for us, for NAVDAQ, to up their game to make sure that these uh, unscrupulous drugs are not there. And then also people joining, create awareness for people to understand the need for them to join the healthcare finance the uh, subnational health insurance uh, agencies so that people will will now transfer this cost to the to those institutions and that will really help in improving the well-being of the country and improving the universal health cost in the country dr usman bashi consultant public health physician bayero university of kano i'd like to thank you so much for joining us on insight thank you so much thank you for having me have a wonderful day Elizabeth Omori comes up next. Our focus is curbing building collapse in Nigeria. Of course, this is coming on the heels of recent incidents across the country.